Hi there, welcome to Odonet. Today I want to talk a little bit about GeoJSON, or more specifically how you can spice up your GeoJSON data a little bit. So what I have here is some GeoJSON data for bars in the Washington area. And this data I just grabbed on GitHub here. A while ago GitHub added the ability to display GeoJSON data in a map. And it makes it kind of cool to just kind of visually see where everything is at. You can click on the points and get some location data, uh, name, address, looks like there's a couple of notes in here. And this is real simple to kind of uh, share your data with other people. And they can come here and edit if they want to. But I want to talk about if we take this data and bring it to ArcGIS online and see what we can do with it. So I've already downloaded this data on my computer, so let's go ahead and add it. Uh, choose File, you can just upload the bare GeoJSON data. Let's give it a tag called bars. And let's go ahead and add this to uh, our content. So what's happening right now is it went ahead and uploaded the raw GeoJSON data into our content in ArcGIS Online and now it's going to go ahead and create a feature service for us that we can use to create some maps and do some cool stuff with. And right now I'm just using my developer account with ArcGIS Online. The free developer account it comes with 50 credits so this is plenty to be able to do the kind of stuff that I want to do here. So now that this is a feature service, I can go and open this and add it to a new map. It's going to come up here. And it's going to go ahead and uh, display this data on the map for us. Uh, and it looks like it's going to use the, uh, by default, the name field to go ahead and show stuff. And we'll leave that there for now. Now, let's work under a scenario here where maybe I'm interested in purchasing one of these bars and I'm looking for where um, I might be able to get the most revenue from. Now, at this point, I'm not too concerned with how much revenue maybe the bars are bringing in. I'm just going to say that based on my criteria, uh, I know where I can make money at. So let's go ahead and do some analysis on this data. So we're going to click on the analysis toolbar and let's do some data enrichment. And we're going to enrich this layer. Let's say go ahead. Make this a little bit bigger here. All right, cool. So if we're going to enrich the bars layer. Uh, let's go and select some variables here. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of stuff people will use, uh, information people would want to make a look for a profitable bar location. But I'll go with the basics here. I'll go with age. Let's work with one year increments. Let's look at the 2015 data. And we're going to go ahead and, of course, pick 21, 22, 23. 24, 25. So we're going to assume that if you're between the ages of 21 and 25, uh, you're going to want to go to a bar. Let's also figure that you're going to want to be within a one mile walking distance of that bar. So after you've had a few, it's pretty easy for you to walk home. So right now what's going to happen is I'm going to run the analysis and behind the scenes, uh, Arctis Online is going to go ahead and do a uh, basically a routing analysis around each of these bars for the one mile walking distance. It's going to take that analysis that's run and then it's going to go ahead and uh, enrich the data with the demographic data that we're looking for, the age groups of 21 to 25. And it's going to, it's not going to give me my uh, route analysis on the map, but it's going to go ahead and add that demographic data to the points. So, because that's what I wanted. Okay, so it looks like it's done. So let's go ahead and look at the table here. Let's see if we add our fields first. Sure thing. We got 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Let's go ahead and add a new field here. And we're going to go ahead and add this uh, target group. We'll call it and give an alias target group. Make it a double field. Uh, default value is zero. Just to be safe here. Alright, so now we have this new field that's been added. Let's calculate the field. And this is going to be our age groups of 21 plus all the 22 year olds plus 23, 24, 25. We can validate it just to make sure it's going to work. And it's successfully verified. Click on calculate. So now we should have a new field with our new numbers here. Awesome. Let's go ahead and visualize this data a little bit more. So let's turn off the bars. Let's go to the rich bars and click on the symbology here or the change style. And we're going to change the style based on 
target group. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and you know, heat maps look cool, right? So click on the heat map here. Right away we can see we got a high concentration uh, in this area here of a couple of bars that look like they are good criteria. So let's make this look a little bit better. Let's go select base map. Let's go with the dark gray canvas. Yeah, that looks cool. So we can go ahead and stop right now if we wanted to. Uh, click done and save the map. And we'll call this uh, bar analysis. Give the tag bars and save the map. Now this looks kind of cool here. We can just go ahead and share this with other people. Kind of gives us something to discuss. You can still click on it and get the information on the bar. Um, but you can also do a little bit uh, more visualization stuff here. So let's click on counts and amounts, size. All right, so let's click on options here. And it's going to be using some of the uh, smart mapping uh, tools built into ArcGIS Online. So we're going to classify the data a bit here. Let's go with natural breaks. Let's go with five classes. And let's go and round up to the nearest 100 just to make our uh, little legend here look good. So the classification's already been done for us. Let's click on the symbology, click on fill, yellow, outline, uh, I like blue. And let's make it a two pixel outline, just for the heck of it. All right, cool. Let's click on OK, undone, and click on save. All right, awesome. So now we see there's actually quite a few choices we have uh, for, for particular bars that we might be interested in looking at. So we have a couple of these here I can click on. Click on here, and this one right here. So we got a couple right next to each other. So now this starts conversation I can start having with partners or just uh, things I can start looking at for my own analysis. Maybe I'd want to rule out bars that are too close to each other, look for one that's maybe uh, near a bar that's a little bit less of a competition, or maybe even look at a bar that's further away from all the other competitions so I can kind of take over a neighborhood. It really depends. But again, all this data came from just some basic GeoJSON data I was able to grab on GitHub and was able to enrich it in ArcGIS Online and now it's taken on a whole new life. So don't be afraid to go ahead and uh, grab your GeoJSON data and do a little bit more with it inside of ArcGIS Online. GeoJSON is a great uh, storage, transportation, format, um, you know, but it doesn't really have a lot of the uh, details you might want to use in something like this. And of course I could export this out as GeoJSON as well and put it back on GitHub and share it with others. But uh, go ahead and give it a shot and see what else you might be able to do. Thanks.